Good morning, everyone. Uh, have you ever wondered um, what the meaning of a bust relief or uh, an ornament was while looking at a piece of art or, or uh, um, okay, it's good. Um, have you ever wondered uh, what kind of instruction you had to perform on during a maintenance task? Uh, well, for many reasons I did, and not only for my job, but because usually uh, us as human beings uh, continuously interact with uh, reality. What I want to, to do today uh, is to talk about how object tracking particularly can help us to improve our lives using augmented reality. In this regard, I will speak briefly about augmented reality, the ma main uh, uh, tracking methods that are available today uh, with a specific focus on object tracking. And in the last part of my speech, I will describe some important use cases that would demonstrate how helpful these methods can be. Uh, so actually, augmented reality, I'm, I'm sure you already know a lot about of it because of uh, this conference and because of your background or whatever. Uh, but what I want to point out is that augmented reality requires somehow to uh, um, gather information for an environment. And this is done uh, mainly using uh, sensors, but uh, specifically um, one kind of sensor is a uh, camera based, uh, is a camera device, a digital camera. Using camera, you can have several different kind of tracking techniques from the very simple one, marker-based tracking, image tracking, or the environment tracking, we will see them briefly, uh, but also other kind of tracking based on uh, the devices, the sensors that you have on your uh, smartphone or whatever. Um, if you look at this video, here you see the very, very old kind of tracking methods based on trial markers, the black and white squares there. Uh, what this me method is good for, actually it's very fast, but even if it is quite old, um, it is noticeable. This means that uh, you un really understand that the something special is, a problem, is a attached and it will happen if you look at that uh, object there. Um, but they are very ugly. You cannot use, for instance, you are promoting a fashion, uh, ob fashion car or something like this. Uh, so they're not very useful for this regard. And they are very uh, uh, mm, sensible to lighting changes. So if you turn off the light or you have shadows on the marker, the tracking will uh, mm, be bad or will mm, completely fail. Uh, also, if you try to mm, cover the marker itself, tracking will fail. And also, it's too noticeable. So it's for this reason, uh, you will see this object near a good looking object and everything won't work anymore. Another matter that quite used today, especially in publishing sector, is image-based tracking like this one. In this case, uh, we are tracking a magazine that, um, for an Italian publisher. And the advantage uh, of this method is that it's nice, not uh, uh, ugly as a marker. Uh, so you can use for posters, blueprints, uh, or magazines. Uh, it's quite fast, so you can use with your smartphone, uh, and also very um, common smartphone, not very advanced one. In the, it supports many different lighting conditions. Uh, and also you can cover the printing, printed images and the tracking will not fail. Uh, and it is noticeable, so it, you can use it also for promoting um, good looking features, or magazines, and so on. Uh, problems is that it is too unnoticeable. So you have to add stickers or something to tell the user that something special is uh, happening if you look at that uh, image. Um, another kind of important tracking method that is quite used today is uh, environment tracking, where uh, looking at the environment, uh, you can uh, create, the, uh, reconstruct the position of the camera in the environment. And um, basically, this method is very good because it's quite fast. Uh, and also, you can cover the environment that the tracking will keep working. Um, and so it is doesn't require to add uh, something special, some marker or whatever. Just the environment is the, uh, the object that you are going to track. Um, and actually it's used more not by itself uh, usually, but uh, uh, as a support for other tracking methods that we, we will see later. Uh, but it requires you to have um, this kind of uh, slam dance, that so you have to perform a specific movement to create the map of the environment. Uh, and also if you change lighting in the room, the tracking may don't work anymore or not as good as was uh, initially. Um, but the major problem of this method is the missing context. Uh, you are just creating a map on the fly, but uh, you are not uh, tracking a specific object, actually. 
another method that's quite common today is uh, location-based tracking. Uh, I think that you know very well this kind of methods. Actually, uh, it uses the GPS and the inertial measure units of the devices to um, uh, augment the locations around you. It's quite fast. Uh, doesn't it is not affected by lighting changes uh, and occlusions, um, and works for this, uh, also with distant locations, of course. Problem is that it drains the battery because it uses, uh, uses additional sensors beyond the camera and jittering because of the GPS can move around, move, uh, change continuously your position and the accuracy is not good uh, enough. And also the noise of mm, the environment uh, can affect the tracking somehow, el electromagnetic noise actually. Uh, object tracking is one of the last, uh, the latest tracking technologies that we can employ today because uh, thanks to the advances in computational power of devices, so we are now able to track objects. So not images or markers, but uh, real objects, 3D objects. The advantage of this method is that you can employ it in re real world scenarios. So when you want to track um, machinery or uh, an engine, a building or whatever. Um, it's quite good also with respect to lighting changes and the occlusion, so you can cover the object if you, if you need it. Um, problem is that it, it is a noticeable, meaning that you know, must know that you have to track and recognize that object. Uh, also sometimes, uh, depending on the methods, lighting changes can be a problem, but we will see that this is not really so because you can try to overcome these problems. And uh, can be quite slow on some devices, um, but the more we go ahead with time and the performance of we are going to improve continuously, these are really not a problem anymore. So uh, uh, there actually doesn't exist a, a better method for every situation. Uh, depending on the use case, for instance, in the public sector, it's good to use images. Sometimes uh, someone still uses markers, but uh, if you think about uh, uh, industrial settings, uh, uh, even if for a medium or a large scale factory where you have thousands of machinery that you want to perform a maintenance task on to, uh, it's not possible to have to attach a marker or an image on top of that machine. Also in the cultural heritage uh, sector, uh, the, uh, for instance, a museum will not allow you to uh, attach a marker near a very good looking piece of art or whatever. So object tracking uh, really makes sense in these scenarios. What I want to talk about now is uh, the two major tracking methods uh, that can, we can be employed today. Uh, we have basically two methods, feature maps method and model-based uh, tracking method. On the left, you see the feature-based method where actually uh, we extract uh, and search for sp uh, specific points, uh, features on the object. On the other side, you see a model-based tracking method where actually what we look for is um, edges. So basically, simply stated, uh, using the feature map map maps method, uh, we'll um, track and recognize the appearance of the object. On the other side, um, for the model-based tracking, we recognize and track the shape, more or less. Uh, this is a demonstration of the uh, feature-based uh, uh, tracking methods. And here you see the features and the recost reconstructed from uh, the method and that are also used to initialize the tracking and also to track the object itself. Uh, as you can see, even if the object is reflective somehow, it can work, but has some problems. Um, the more you use it and the more prob the problems can uh, happen actually. And it's also quite uh, robust with respect to lighting changes. Uh, this is the model-based tracking method. Here, basically, you have to align uh, a shape of the object uh, to the real object, and then you can uh, start tracking it. And it is quite robust, actually, this one, because uh, it's just look for the edges, the boundaries of the shape. So uh, if there are some reflection, they don't, don't affect, actually, the tracking uh, uh, a lot. Uh, so, uh, to compare these two methods, uh, it is useful to consider what is involved in the creating the uh, augmented reality experiences based on those methods. Uh, generally speaking, uh, regardless, of the, of the regardless of the method, there are three phases uh, involved in the creating augmented reality experiences. The first one, uh, trackable authoring, uh, rec mm, is related to the creation of efficient and uh, ef mm, effective tracking data for the object that you want to track. 
Uh, the second phase relates to the content that you want to add on top of the tracked object. And uh, um, this main, uh, these two phases actually are um, usually made by developers or content creators and the likes. Uh, while the experience execution is the final uh, phase where you deploy the application and the tracking data and someone else use it, use it, okay? And mm, maybe just doing the test phase is the people that, the person that execute the experience is also the developer, but mostly it's uh, someone that doesn't even know how these tracking methods work. Uh, the main, uh, uh, the, the tracking, let's go through, let's go through uh, each phase to compare them, uh, the tracking methods. Uh, for the tracking um, data uh, authoring, the feature maps method requires you to take features from several points of view. Uh, for instance, in this case, we want to track the, that model, the car model. Um, after that, uh, the algorithm creates a point cloud, a 3D reconstruction of the car itself, and also the um, camera point of views that you had when you took pictures of the object. And those uh, initial, uh, those uh, um, camera views will, should be the same as the final user will have to um, be when tracking and start tracking that object, as we will see later. Uh, whereas, uh, talking about the model-based tracking, what you have to provide is a CAD model of the object that you want to track. And the method extracts a shape or a silhouette, if you want, of the object. And what you have to do is to choose uh, in the point of view uh, uh, that you would like the user to have when start looking at a, a real object. And then he has to align this uh, shape to the real object. Uh, but basically, uh, the feature map methods actually requires one more step. Uh, because the reconstruction is not, um, is not a predef predefined uh, 3D reference system at a scale. So basically you have to uh, somehow provide this information and usually you do this uh, by picking uh, points on the pictures that you have uh, taken and also on a 3D model a reference uh, that uses as a reference. And you can do this for two or three pictures actually. And after that, you can process and create the tracking data using uh, any available system. Uh, so there is this one more step involved for the feature maps method. Whereas for the model-based tracking method, that's all that you have to do. Um, if we want to add content to uh, either methods, basically the, 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 the technique is actually the same, but you, you just have to have one reference, 3D reference model like we have already seen, and then you can use Unity or some plugins or an SDK to add 3D, the 3D contents on top of this. Here you see that there is a better extracted model, but this is just to tell you that you can even don't, don't have a 3D CAD model, but you can try to use your photogrammetry to reconstruct it. Uh, instead, in this case, you have a, an accurate CAD model for it. And uh, finally, this is one of the phase where the user, um, uh, that affects the user the most. Because let's say that you want to track and recognize that car, uh, the user has to uh, look at the object using any of these point of views, more or less. The method is quite toler tolerable, but you have to be on, uh, in one of those points of view. Um, up, whereas talking about the model-based tracking, what the user had to do is to align the 3D silhouettes of the model to the real object. And, and this, is, this means that you, just, you just have one point of view to initialize tracking. Uh, let us compare the two methods from this point of view. Basically, um, the model-based tracking method is quite good because you just have to provide the CAD model. So you just need one step, whereas we have, as we have seen, the feature maps method requires a lot of steps to create the trackable, trackable data. But uh, the advantage of the feature maps method is that you can start tracking from many points, points of view, whereas on the model-based basic uh, model-based tracking, just one point of view. Uh, the initialization times, uh, well, uh, the feature mass method usually uh, takes uh, longer. And other important aspect that you must consider if you want to choose among those methods is that uh, lightning affects the feature map method uh, more because you take pictures in specific uh, lighting conditions. So if you change environment, this could affect somehow the tracking. 
uh, the appearance of the surf of the object itself. If uh, you take pictures of a very clean object and then the object gets get dirty or worn, it could not track as, as well as uh, earlier. Uh, the environment could affect the tracking somehow, but not so much but for my methods. Uh, reflection transparency can affect tracking, but for edges, tra model-based tracking, less than the other methods because we just track the silhouettes. And usability, as we are see, this depends on the end user that has to uh, correctly align uh, a model or just take the correct initial position. And finally, generalization uh, is related to the fact that uh, you can take pictures of an object uh, or create a CAD model for an object and then you can track another object uh, similar to that one. Okay, uh, I don't have <laughs> enough time to show the use cases, but yeah, if you're interested, we can catch up later. So thank you very much, Alessandro. Thank you. And, uh, Thanks.